Good to have you all here. Uh, we have a, a special guest, Pastor, but not a special guest. Uh, we had uh, Pastor Dick Nealonar, uh long history leading a huge church up in Pennsylvania, and he hasn't raised our pulpit for a while. We're uh, very happy to, to have him back today. Had a beautiful service yesterday for Pastor Anna and Rob. Uh, now man and wife, and they're heading down to Hawaii for a honeymoon, so uh, we will uh, have a Bill Pastor next weekend as well. But, uh, good.
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the name of Christ. Have to get the magic screen up. God. When I come to church, I do it to, to look deeply within myself. I I want to be in touch with those things that have gone right and those things that have gone wrong and share them with my God. I am very aware of my failures. I'm very aware of my losses. And in this year, you know, when we're just coming back together after a crazy year, we know losses, right? I, I don't know about you all, but Alice and I know four people who have died of COVID-19 this year. M many others who have been badly affected. I bet you you know people as well. Our losses are real, and, and we we stop, we pause, we remember, and, and give them up to God. I also share with God my thanksgiving for blessings, and and there are many, and one of them that has allowed us to come back together. It is the, the inoculation, right? The COVID-19 inoculation. Uh, because of that, you know, a few weeks, uh, a couple of months ago, now, I guess, uh, we got our second inoculation and we turned to one another and said, okay, when are we going north to see our kids after more than a year? And, and we just got back from, from seeing uh, my oldest son and his family and got to see uh, Logan, my, my uh Oldest grandson play baseball. Eight games while we were up there it was great. It, it's kind of spooky though because he was when we saw him a year ago. He was here and now he's here and he's looking me dead in the eye. I don't know how that happened, but all of a sudden things change. And but it's a blessing for us that we absolutely celebrate being there with them. Because sometimes in this last year, I, I thought to myself, we may never see them again. Right? And my guess is many of us have been there. When I got my first inoculation, I was with a very mature group of people. You had to be 65 at that point. And uh, so we're standing in line. and and chatting back and forth six feet apart, of course. And uh, uh, I, I said, you know, I remember standing in another line many years ago for an inoculation, the polio vaccine. You remember? A few of us are going, oh yeah, I remember that, you know? We who are of a certain maturity, I say. <laughs> and uh, uh, I stood in line in a school gymnasium with my mother and my sister. I don't remember my dad being there. Maybe he got it at work. I don't know. But we stood in a, in a gymnasium and we got the shot the first time. A year later, we got, got it on a 
sugar cube, remember that? Okay. So some of us have lived through that. But I think what makes it very memorable to me is that my mother wept. She was so relieved and gave such thanks for that. We, we had, I had an aunt, Virginia. He, she was my, my dad's sister. And according to both he and my mother, she was the best athlete in her high school. And she got polio and ended up in an iron lung. And my mother just didn't want us to have to face that. You know, they worked for more than 20 years to try to develop that vaccine. COVID-19, discovered in 19 and 21, most of us are vaccinated, right? That's something to give thanks for. It frees us to live our life again. We get to go out to dinner with friends again. And when you're old like us, you know, seeing your kids going out to dinner, that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> we enjoy that. Well, the, the text for today is, is uh, the last of the I am statements in John. The Gospel of John has, uh, has a bunch of I am statements. I think there's seven. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. Knock and it will be open to you. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then finally, we get to this one. I am the true vine. You are the branches. My father is the vine dresser, the, the, the one who, who grows the vines, right? This is a definite turning point. This is the beginning of the end of Jesus' ministry. This is the beginning of the farewell discourse. Jesus begins to counsel with his disciples. This becomes a kind of a private moment, a pastoral moment, between he and the disciples. And he begins to teach them things are going to change. I'm going to be gone soon. I will not leave you desolate, but I will be leaving. And I need to get you ready. For that time. And here's what to expect. You're going to be outcasts in the temple. They're going to throw you out. You're going to be an anathema to Rome. They're going to be coming after you. But I will not leave you desperate. I will show you the way. The spirit of the living Christ will be with you. And will help you to find the way. How to deal with all of this? He starts with this. I am the vine. You are the branches. My father is the vine grower. Abide. Stay with me. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. Now the fruits of the Spirit according to uh, Paul in Galatians are the following. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I don't remember things that well anymore. I tend to summarize. The fruits of the Spirit are love, right? They're being loving toward others who need that love and support. There's a great text that, again, comes from, from the Johannine, the, the John-written books, God is what? Love. See, the, the kids in my confirmation class, they always say, well, if pastor asks this question, it's either Jesus or love. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I couldn't argue with that. God is love. Now, I've seen this text uh, talked about and, and preached on and, and sometimes people worry about this cutting off the branches and throwing them into the fire. They see that as, as law and, and, and that God's going to punish us if we don't bear fruit. Well, that's, that's not it. Now, the vine dresser loves the vine. He wants the vine to do well. 
the purpose of the vine is to do what? Bear fruit, right? So he does those things that need to be done so that the vine can bear fruit. You know, for several years, a fair number of years, I, I did bonsai trees. You know what bonsai trees are? They're little trees in a pot. And what I really loved to do was uh, uh, Japanese maples. I just found them very interesting. They're a beautiful little tree if you're up north. Uh, they're a beautiful tree. And uh, uh, I love the process. In the wintertime, absolutely bare. It's just a bunch of sticks. But in the spring, it starts to come out. First, the, the little buds, slight, little tiny buds that are slightly red. And then a little bit later, it starts to, to come forth. And the, the first sign of real growth is, uh, is little leaves that are yellow green and then as they get a little bigger they turn pink actually and then finally in the fall they ch uh, change to cherry red and then they all fall off and the process starts again right well i i left i gave away almost all of my trees but i did bring one down uh, and it was uh, it was a small one it was about so wide, about that big, and and uh, I worked hard caring for that tree. I love those trees. I check, I check, treated them like children, you know. I would look at them and I'd turn them around, study them, and I think if if that if that branch was up just a little bit, it would look a little better. So you can wrap some wire around that branch and bend it up a little bit. Three months later, you take the wire off and it sticks right there. Okay? I mess around with that all the time. And I, but I brought the one down. And, you know, I found that, that caring for a Japanese maple down here was really difficult because for it, once it drops its leaves, the only way you can get it to reboot is to refrigerator. It's got to go in a refrigerator for three or four months, pack the ice around it. Alice loved it when I would do it. She, I mean, she, she just celebrated that. Uh, and uh, it came out for three years. It was, it, it did great. It, it grew, it was a magnificent little tree. But the fourth year, I brought it out, it was done. It, I couldn't keep it cold enough, long enough, and uh, it died. And as the uh, as the one who was growing, I grieved over that tree. That's the way the vine dresser is with with uh, the vines. I mean, he's he's intimately involved with it. I think the the vine dresser cares for the vine like like uh, and takes care of it like like we do with the crape myrtle. You got crape myrtles around the house? Anybody? In Del Webb, everybody gets a great <laughs> Everybody has a great Now, they're the oddest looking trees in the in the spring because you, you get a big trunk and all the, the branches are cut off, but just a, a few that stick out three or four different directions about that far. And right now, it's the oddest looking thing. There's, there's about six leaves on it. Six weeks from now, this thing will be have huge boughs loaded with flour to the point where when it rains, the flowers are so heavy that they threaten to break the branches. But for that to happen, it's got to be pruned. Right? If you don't do that, you're not going to get the bloom like we do. So... That's the way the vine dresser is to care for the the, the vines. If I, I think in this case, the little picture in your bullet is helpful. I don't know how many of you have been around uh, vines, but I think about the second or third page the little picture. Yeah, there's that's the one. Looks like a cross. And actually, if you go to a a uh, 
I could I could get on this page in the first service, but in the second service, I'm not so sure I can. You can have this one. I got it. I got. I did it myself. So, it, uh, if you uh, if you go to a vineyard, you'll find that after the grapes are harvested, there's a whole bunch of just you know, it looks like a vine. It's all over the place. It starts to drop the leaves. And pretty soon, the vine dresser is in there cutting it back. Cuts off all of the old growth because if it's not barren, it's going to be close to it. Very few uh, grapes are going to come out on that in the spring. But if you cut it back, and that's just the way they do it, there's this, this strong uh, root vine that goes... And it's uh, maybe six inches to a foot across, depending on how old it is. It goes into the ground, comes up about three feet, a wire goes across today, and those two side branches are maybe a couple of feet across. That's all that's left. There are absolutely no leaves, no grapes. This is kind of to help you see this. It's a great fun. But in actuality, there wouldn't be any of that. Okay, it just looks like a dead cross. Then the spring comes along, explodes. They feed it, they care for it, and pretty soon it's loaded, loaded with uh, with grapes. Vine grower prunes so that it might grow. In produce fruit. I was watching the news last week while I was up with the kids and uh, I saw a preacher on the news. I always check to see what that's, what's, that is about because usually when you have a preacher on the news, it's not good news for preachers. <laughs> so I check. And this guy is up on a stage and he's dancing around. I, I'd like to demonstrate, but I don't have an image. <laughs> Uh, and he is dancing around and he says, I am a modern prophet and you should not get those inoculations. He says, we are free in Christ. Nobody can make us do anything. We can do whatever we want and we don't have to do anything. Okay. And then he goes on to talk about independence and about freedom and he even dances over and talks a little bit about the self-made man. And I thought, interesting, I've never seen those texts. You know, if you look at those, if you look at scripture, Jesus does not talk about independence. Jesus talks about interdependence. Being involved with one another. Caring for those who are in need. Caring for those who need us. He talks about love. And churches that become insular, that care only for their own or for people that look like them, they can call themselves whatever they want. But as one who has cared for a lot of plants over the years, they look to me like branches that have been cut off from the vine. They are not Christian. I have to say that too often in my time in the Lutheran church, I have seen that too often we have been fearful. We have been afraid to take a stand because we don't want to be called political. We've been afraid to do what is right. Friends, if you look at Scripture, Jesus takes a stand. Jesus decides on which side he's on. He takes a side for the outcasts over those who would ostracize. He takes a stand for the poor over the rich, the oppressed over the oppressor, the, the abused over the abuser. He stands with the less fortunate. If we go to church and we never hear in Scripture or in the preaching that that's the case, that, that, that we need to be standing with those who are hurting, 
then we haven't really been to church. We may sit in the pew, but if all that does is to reinforce the status quo, that in my mind is not going to church. Arch Archbishop Desmond Tutu, apartheid, this man where said, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If you like Lutherans better, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran pastor and Nazi, Nazi resistor during World War II, wrote, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. While many others stayed silent, Luke, uh, uh, Bonhoeffer spoke out and he died for his words. But they're still remembered. If we look at the Bible, you find that Scripture says God is love. Scripture speaks of binding up the broken heart. Scripture speaks of God's lifting up the load. We have the stories of foot washing where Jesus knelt before his disciples and washed their feet, showing them what true discipleship looked like. We have the story of the Good Samaritan, the story of the man born blind, the story of the lepers. And again and again, Jesus reaches out, crosses boundaries to reach out to those who work in need. The ELCA has a motto, God's work, our hands, right? When I was in the parish, we used to take our young people who were in confirmation class off to confirmation camp. We'd take them to uh, an old church camp and we'd gather with other congregations and other pastors and uh, we would teach and let the kids get to know us in a different way. We just thought that was a great experience. And at night, we would gather around the campfire. If you think back in, in, in to Jesus' time, when he's talking with the, these folks, uh, they didn't have central air and heat, you know? They, for them to, to stay warm at night, there was only one way, and it was the fire. And so, when they cut off those branches, those branches fed the fire, kept them warm. Well, we were gathered around the fire like that. And one of the things we would do in that time would be we would sing songs of faith. And one of them that all the kids always learned, and usually I, I, I would let them pick parts of the service uh, on their confirmation day. They usually wanted to sing this to the congregation. It goes like this. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. God is love. We all remember that. God is love. And rooted in love, we become the people.
we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our God, the Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will not be judged to the living dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word, and give yourself to the whole church on earth, so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is very clear. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is very clear. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence that they lead not by fear, but with love, for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love. Those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all, especially our country, that peace may prevail. All who are suffering from COVID and for their caregivers and for all families who have lost loved ones due to COVID or other causes. All medical professionals, especially Allie, Mallory, Edson, Meredith, and Troy. All of our church leaders, especially Bishop Eaton, Bishop Suarez, and our Senate staff. Our congregation leadership as they discern the path forward for our congregation. All victims of violence, prejudice, and injustice, and all families who have lost loved ones due to violence and prejudice. All those recovering from surgery, including Lewis Lizzie and Gina Lipst. All those suffering from cancer or other medical conditions, including Chuck Swain, Don Conley, Barb Smith, Becky Watson, Alex and Elsa Grove, Sharon Fisher, John Gieson, Roy Miller, Anna Kalin, Dustin Darby, Pam, Peggy Shaw, Ron, Don, Jerry, Gary, and Alex Langston. All those who need encouragement and your healing presence, especially Jesse Enderly, Ron Smith, Jerry Buckingham, Sue. Greg and Philip Blacksmith, Steve Rasmussen, Kathy, Alex, the family of Fred Johnson, Cindy, Kim, Kelly, the family of Chris Peters, Diane Kevin, Libby Santusi, John Wilson, the Indianapolis family, and Barry and Margaret Johnson. All those who are homebound, especially Betty Berziak, David Keister, and Miss Charlotte. And all those we mention in our hearts and 
and on our lips. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit with them. May our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you.
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus talks. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to his table. Come eat. And be satisfied. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. God of life, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh